Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we are going to be doing is checking out Only Office. This application, in my opinion, is one of the best that you could use, especially if you're somebody who is making the switch from something like Microsoft Office to an application that one runs natively on Linux and is free and open source, at least this desktop version of it. And we're gonna be getting more into that in a little bit. And full disclosure from the front, the team over at OnlyOffice is actually sponsoring this video. So later on, I'm gonna be talking about some of the other solutions and some of the things that they offer as a company. After we go ahead and overview how awesome their just general free and open source desktop office applications are. Now, the first application we're in is their WordPress processor. Now I've been playing around with this for about a couple weeks or so and I've actually used it off and on quite a bit, especially when I was first making that switch. And the reason why I like to suggest the only office suite of applications is mostly because of the UI. Compatibility is obviously very important and they're very good at handling docx documents and any other Microsoft Excel or PowerPoint documents. But just the general UI is so familiar that if you're somebody who's used to using Microsoft Office, you're not really going to have a hard time navigating throughout these applications. And when I say this, I'm mostly referring to this kind of ribbon style of organization of all the different tools and elements you have. If I go ahead and go over here and open up a document, I think this is the same document right here in Microsoft Office. This is the online version of Microsoft Office. You can see a lot of the uh, formatting here is very similar. So we have both the home and insert tabs, layout, references, and then from there it kind of gets unique based on these specific applications. But the primary tabs that you're gonna be working in in these word processors are all there, and they have a lot of the same tools, and in many cases, only Office here is gonna have a lot more tools up in front and a lot, uh, in my opinion, better organized than any other application, or even if you're forced to use the online version of Word on your Linux system. So most everything you'd get in Word or what you'd expect out of a Word processor is here. You have your basic font and text editing tools, your bolds, you can add highlights. Over here we have headings, footnotes. You could create your own styles, a whole bunch of different things. They have a very good way to lay in tables. So I do believe that is over in references. And if you go table of contents here, depending on your heading format, it'll go ahead and import those for you. If we go back over to home or really any tab that we happen to be on, we have these two side panels over here. It's a skinnier side panel with some uh, copy and paste stuff. We can go ahead and search our documents through here add comments, open up the navigation if you're using headings, and then you have a link here to go ahead and get some uh, support if you do need that, so you have training courses, things like that. If we go over here into this panel, you have even more tools that are easily accessible, including your line spacing, your paragraph spacing, all your indents. If I go over here and I go to show advanced settings, that's where it's gonna open up the dialog box and give me a lot more things such as the uh, paddings, borders and fill, things like that. And you may notice some other tools on the side here that I can't really click on, but you access those by actually interacting with the uh, features that these tools represent. So if I click right here, I can insert a table of whatever size I want. And now that I'm in this table over here is where it's going to give me all those extra tools and utilities for that specific element or that specific thing that I'm working on over here. And then of course, within these tables, you could add formulas and things like that. So overall, everything is very functionable in this application here. And you saw some of the other things you have insert uh, images, charts, shapes, hyperlinks, header, footer, time, date, text box, text, R equation symbols, so on and so forth. You have all your different layout settings. Here we have references. We briefly saw that table of contents. But you can also do uh, captions, cross-referencing, more footnote stuff. Under collaboration, this is pretty cool. This is where you could go ahead, add comments, resolve issues, track changes. So a lot of these tools are really good, if, especially if you're working in a team of people who are using this same software and you're writing a blog post or an article, for example, you could ship this over to the editor and he could use a lot of these tools to tell you what you should, shouldn't change, things like that. Over here under protection, this is pretty cool. You can actually uh, specifically encrypt a document with passwords here. And then you have some options to add a signature. And then we have plugins. Now this is cool, we have a photo editor. So if I actually open this up real quick, I'm not manipulating a specific photo at the moment, but you can kind of see down here some of the tools we have, including text, shapes, colors, brightness, noise, pixelate, all kinds of things going on here. 
close that out and of course we can add more so if i go over to settings you can see right here we can add plugins and earlier i was checking one out let's see if i can find it there it is this is one example of a plugin that you could add if you would like to this one's called typograph and it goes over everything that it does it uh it's kind of like grammarly but built into this in a way it has some of this uh, some similar functionality uh, we have punctuation date money html the ability to add uh, custom signs and mathematical equations a bunch of different things and here you could see some of well you could kind of see some of the uh, different options and things you could go ahead and add here but that's just one example and then like to add this all you would need to do is view it on github right here so you get on github and then you have the plugin right there it's a wonderful tool and speaking of that like i said a little bit earlier this is a free and open source application at least they're a desktop editor and the license agreement is pretty simple go over here you can see that they're using their own suite to go ahead and share these documents it's under the uh, GNU license. You can redistribute it, modify it under the terms of this specific license. And another thing that's really impor important in terms of actual compatibility, I open documents that I've made on Windows machines and made at school a lot of the times. This is just something I was using to kind of test out the uh, formatting. This is a very large uh, docx document. And I opened it up over here. Oh, not this one. I opened it up over here. And overall, the formatting and everything came in perfectly fine. And this one, I personally have never had any issues. On full disclosure, the one time that I saw this have an issue was on a review that Tom over at Switch to Linux did. He has a very specific use case, and he tried to import his uh, novel that he wrote, that he wrote in uh, Libre Writer, and he had some formatting issues with that. But other than that, I have not seen any other issues with this. And of course, this word processing application is not the only application. It's all kind of built into one, so it's not spread out everywhere. But we also can create spreadsheets, just like in uh, Excel. And we can create PowerPoint presentations if you would like to. And just like with their word processor, they have a lot of the types of things that you'd, go to, you'd uh, expect in a PowerPoint type application. And of course, I think it's uh, PPTX is the file extension for PowerPoints. You're going to be able to open up those with basically no issue at all in this application. I would go ahead and demonstrate Excel, but any actual examples I have are things I probably shouldn't be showing on the internet. But just know in my experience using this, I've had no issue. And I've actually been using this online more than on my computer. I have this, uh, I was using, I think it's Collabora Office on Nextcloud. I was using that for a little while, but I kept having issues here and there. I like had to manually downgrade it to get it to work. Bunch of weird things. So I just went ahead and completely replaced it with only Office. They have all kinds of online integrations and things like that, which is actually what I'm going to get into now. This is more of the uh, sponsored segment of this video. So they do have a lot of different products and features right here. The one thing that we were mostly paying attention to is the uh, only Office for desktop. That's what we've been looking at. But additionally, they have only Office Docs. And what you could do with this is go ahead and run it on your own server instance. And a lot of companies do. They have a, a string of companies down here. And if I scroll down, you can see all the different people who actually run only Office. That you see they have a community editions, enterprise editions, and developer editions. These two editions are not free and open source, but this one is. You can see it's under the APGL version 0.3. I go ahead and get it now, this community edition here. You could easily install it through a Docker image, through Ubuntu, Windows Server, if for some, for some reason you're using that. Snap packages, so you could go ahead and try out a server instance today. If I go over here, this is where we can compare the only Office editions. We have the community edition, which we just talked about. And then we have the enterprise and developer. Uh, both of these are proprietary. This one's free and open source. And if I scroll down here, some of the differences that we get, for example, the uh, developer version doesn't have their private rooms. Only the developer version has like white label interfaces. Uh, the community edition will not have those mobile web editors. They keep scrolling. The community edition is missing uh, content controls and document comparison features. It's missing uh, some sheet views. Really for most people, the community version is probably going to be good enough, but depending on your specific use cases and how much you end up liking the software, you may want to look into something like uh, the developer or enterprise editions. You can see right here some of the integrations. You have Nextcloud integrations, which I briefly touched on, but you could also put it on any of these, such as your own cloud, things like that. And they really have a lot more things that I'm not really going to have the time to talk about. Uh, this is something I'm interested in trying out, the uh, only Office workspace. 
where you can host your own uh, mail instances and CRMs and things like that. Really cool stuff. So I'm really looking forward to checking that out. Uh, I'll have all the download links. You can run this on any Linux distribution. If I go down here, you can see you can download a Debian version of it, RPM, you can get it from the Snap Store, Flatpak, App Images. They, they, you have options when it comes to trying this out. So with that said, I would love to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have uh, Mitchell Valentino, Sledgehammer, Phil Matt, Kyle, Timo, Anthony, and Chris Curtis. Thank you guys, and thank you Only Office for helping support the channel. And a uh, big thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. I do really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.